Good evening, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Pits of Motor Chaos. This is Yo's Dave. Goliath special guest, top sportsman driver, Paul Mitzel. How you doing, Paul? Great. How you doing? Not bad. So how was your uh, Christmas and New Year? Christmas was awesome. Uh, it was a little bit different in, uh, in the respect that we normally have a huge family gathering with uh, my mom, dad, brothers, sister-in-laws, nieces and nephews. To the tune of about 35 people, and uh, we, we didn't do that this year. But uh, I, I have four children and two grandchildren, so we kind of kept it uh, small in each of our respective homes. And uh, I had quite the crowd just with my kids and grandkids. It was about 12 of us, and uh, it was it was different, but but it was good. It, was, it almost seemed like it was the start of a new tradition. Uh, you know, New Year's was was quiet, and uh, definitely looking. Uh, forward to a, a better 2021 over 20 like like everybody you know hopefully we can uh, get back to some sense of normalcy here right so 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 with this crazy year did you do much drag racing i did i actually uh i was i had the ability to uh actually go to nine races this year F- funny thing is um after uh, arizona the arizona national which i was uh, fortunate to win Everything got shut down um, after that. I was actually on a plane on my way to Gainesville, and the Gainesville event got uh, canceled. And uh, I was going to, to watch to support my uh, my teammate, Ryan Pretty, who runs Factory Stock Showdown. Uh-huh. And uh, that event got canceled. And uh, so I basically flew to Florida, flew, home, flew back home the next day. And I think uh, I'm not really sure when the next race was. I, you know what? I think it was Sonoma. I think the next race was Sonoma. But between uh, uh, quite a few races in Vegas, they had the, the Sport National Double, they had a Vegas National, and they had the Vegas Divino. So it was four races basically in, in three weekends. So I, I was fortunate enough to actually end up with um, four, four Nationals and five Divisionals. So, uh, which typically that's what I do. I do anywhere from eight to ten. So uh, although the pandemic was set upon us, I was uh, fortunate to uh, be able to race as much as I did. So uh, yeah, it was it was good. It was a good good fun fun year. Yeah, how the car run for you? The the car ran uh, very good. I'm, I'm very fortunate where I feel like I have one of the best cars on the circuit. My car. He's very consistent to, to the thousand. There's there's a funny thing in the pits where some of my fellow uh, top sportsman racers will, will ask me what am, what am I dialing to the thousand because it's the car will form and repeat over and over again. Uh, unfortunately, the driver isn't always with the car, and, uh, although uh, there would be much much more wind lights uh, in my direction. But car car ran great. I mean, it's a uh, I have a 688 cubic inch Sunny uh, Leonard powered machine, and uh, it, it makes to the tune of 1,650 horsepower, and the car weighs 2,350 with me in it. So I'm actually a little heavy. Uh, it's, a, it's a heavy, it's an old pro stock car. It's a heavy pro stock car. So the fact that I run as quickly as I do in the 660 at uh, about 209, it's, uh, it's, it's, moving, it's moving pretty good. So what, what's the fastest you got in that car, 209? Yeah, 209. Two, I want to say I actually ran 662 at 209.30 at Pomona. Nice. Which is funny because we thought we would run faster in Sonoma, but for some reason the air just wasn't there this year. But, yeah, 662 is, is the fastest I've ever been in that car. It's the fastest I've ever been in that car. So now what, what what's the make of the body of that car? It's a uh, it's a Jerry Haas uh, built chassis and it's a Dodge uh, Stratus. We ran it in pro stock in, in one year in 2008. Vinny DeSegli drove it for one year, and uh, after that the uh, pro stock turned to the Dodge uh, Avenger, which my dad wanted to go ahead and, and purchase a Dodge Avenger to keep up with the class and the category because that's that's the direction that all the Dodge drivers were going. Larry Morgan, Alan Johnson, uh, D. Gaines, many of the guys that drove the Dodges. 
switched over to the Avenger. My dad didn't want to be behind the eight ball, so he decided to, to buy a new chassis in, in it being the Avenger. And, uh, but held on to the Stratus because he knew at some point I, I had always wanted to uh, drive in NHRA. And uh, he, he kept the car parked for a couple of years so that when I was ready to actually get into the seat and drive it, it, it would be my car to have. And, uh, that so now, how, how did you get into drag racing in the first place? Was it your dad's fault? I'm sorry, say that one more time before I'm broke uh, I said, how did you get into drag racing in the first place? Was it, was it dad's fault? Yeah, yeah, I got I got snake bit like everybody else. Uh, my dad ran Comp Eliminator, uh, not driving, but o- owning a, the team. Uh, Vinny DeSedley was the driver. Uh, we ran a 63 split window Corvette. We ran A altered in it. And uh, and I traveled with the team, and I worked on the car. I, I would do the clutch. I would I was in charge of the tires, clutch maintenance, and uh, things of that nature. And uh, I, I I loved it so much that I wanted to be able to experience the things that Vinny experienced when he was uh, driving the car and, and going through the events. And I'm a very competitive person by nature, and I just love the fact that uh, being able to go fast, to be competitive. And, and, and really also the, the thing I love most about racing are the types of relationships that you build with the people in the pits. It's, uh, that's another facet of racing that, that is unbelievable. And until you experience it, uh, you, you can't explain it. You can't, you can't uh, realize exactly how special and important that is. So uh, when I finally, I went, I went to the Frank Hawley Drag Racing School in, uh, which was at Pomona. I, I don't recall the year I went, but uh, I had a really tough time. I, I was basically in a super gas car. It was probably off the stop. It was like a 930 car at like 140 miles an hour. And the first run that you have to make in order to graduate, you know, there's, there's a series of runs. You have to do 200 feet. Then you have to do 400 feet. Then there's the 660. Then, then the 1,000, then the quarter mile. You need to do each progressive one in order to, to license in a car. It took me five times to, to not lift my foot off the throttle to the 200-foot mark. It was, it was very traumatic for me. It was very, uh, I got very upset. Um, the first day, I had to pay for extra runs because you're only allotted so many runs. Long story short, I was able to conquer it. Once I got past that initial jolt, which if you've never been in a race car, it's it's quite uh, it's quite a shock. It's it's like nothing. It's faster than on any roller coaster anyone has ever been on. So uh, had a tough time doing that. But once I actually got over the feet, I, I gained my license. I uh, I started drive. I drove a friend's car in, in competition, uh, which was a it was probably an eight eight eighty car. 890 and um and and then we i i basically did one event in that and then after that i went first funny thing my first event i ever went to i i it was a national open and i runnered up i went all the way to the final uh everybody was all excited about that and all of a sudden they put a 598 with a with a uh with a power glide in the dodge stratus and i started running that but on on the throttle stop and in one day, I went from going 990, and by the end of the day, I was going 770, and uh, it was it was pretty awesome. And, and it took me quite a few years to uh, you know gaining run seat time. There's no replacement for seat time. You want to go down the track as many times as you can so that you're absolutely comfortable. Anybody out there that, that thinks they can just do what you know go from nothing, to go from a street car to going 180 miles an hour. No way. It, it's uh, there's no way that that can be done. At least not smart and and not safely. Um, but it, it, it took me a while to uh, to gain a lot of seat time, gain a lot of confidence, be one with the car, and and really uh, know what to expect when certain things happen. And uh, and now current day, I'm I'm going six sixty. So uh, it, it's it's pretty awesome. But it, what's really interesting in being a race car, being able to drive a race car is um how everything slows down like just last like a year ago i was uh consistently like seven o's 
And uh, I went from going seven O's at a buck ninety, buck ninety two, to six sixty at two ten. And that's a big, big jump in a car. I mean, to four tenths of a jump and at twenty miles an hour is huge. But but the real funny thing that probably a lot of people can attest to. Once you go that, once you go from one speed to the next speed, and it really gets your attention, you it, it's interesting how it slows down. It, it's after the third, fourth run in the car, it feels no different than going a slower speed. It's it's uh, it's it's really remarkable how the human body and the brain can react to and and adapt to how fast, uh, how much faster you're going. It's uh, it's remarkable, actually. So now, Paul, after all this, all the seat time you've had now, do you think you could get any better as a drag racer? And if so, how do you achieve that to get better? Yeah, I um, the answer to that question is is absolutely. I have gotten better, and 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 the things that make uh, a drag racer better is is focus. Being able to be focused at the task, the task at hand. Um, like anything in life, it's interesting. Um, the things that most of us do good in life, no matter what it is, we don't think about it. It becomes second nature. Um, becoming a, a, a really good drag racer is where you don't have to think. You just react. And you react to things in the right way. Um I, I found myself early on that the more I thought about the things I had to do, the more mistakes I made. Because oftentimes when somebody thinks about things or overthinks about things that they have to do, it's those very thoughts that get in the way of you performing the task at hand. And, and that's something that I've learned to do where I know what needs to be done. I can't even tell you how I do it. It just comes naturally after doing it for so long and uh you know it's it's as a as a driver at least for me i do everything the same every time i put my jacket on the same i i get in the car at the same the same at the same point when my car is so far into the staging lane when there's so many cars in front of me i buckle my seat belts the same i i go through all my gauges all the processes that i have to do it, it, recording the run setting the i have a burnout chip on my car turning the burnout chip on turning it off making sure the fuel pumps on everything that i do i do it the same and and it becomes repetition and and it's it's those very actions that enable me to do it without even thinking about it. Um, one thing I will share with you is that uh, I actually have crashed twice, and believe it or not, um, it's probably the some of the best things that have happened to me uh, is by crashing in a race car. You you now you now know what not to do when you're in that situation. And, and at the end of the day, what happened to me in both instances was I was too hot on the brakes. Both times it was after the finish line. Both times I have carbon fiber brakes. Both times I locked up the brakes. Car made a left-hand turn, a right-hand turn. And uh, knowing uh, uh, what not to do, you have to, unfortunately, you have to go through something like that so that you know what not to do when you're presented with that situation. And I'll give you an example of what I mean by that. Last year um, at the World Finals in at Pomona, I happened to run, uh, not when I say last year, I'm talking about 2019. I happened to run a uh, comp eliminator, and um, the very last run down the track, I wasn't a very competitive car in comp eliminator, but I wanted to have seat time driving the car. It's a local event to where I live, so it was, it was fun. Anyway, first round, I go down there. I, I lose. I, I lost. I got beat. And um, when I went through the finish line, it doesn't matter if you win or lose. You still got to stop the car. Still got to pull the parachutes. Still got to get off the track safely. When I went to pull the chutes, I, they didn't open. And I don't know why. I have air chutes, uh, but I use a manual lever. They should work for whatever reason they didn't. One of the things that I do as a driver is I let the parachutes do most of the stopping uh, so that I'm not hot on the brakes, heavy on the brakes, getting in, getting myself in trouble. So uh, when the chutes didn't open, and, and, I, and I was aware of this immediately because I know when, the way my car 
is going to uh, de-accelerate. It wasn't doing so. So I started getting on the brakes. Well, Pomona has kind of a short shutdown. And when you're going 209, it comes up really fast. When I tell you I used every part of the track to stop the car, I the nose of my car was hanging over where the sand begins. I didn't go in the sand, but I took every inch of the track to stop. And when I was getting on the brakes, I had to get on the brakes harder. But, but because of my past experiences being in a, in a wreck, I knew what not to do where I wasn't getting too heavy on the brakes. And um, I, could, I could feel the tires starting to lock up as my brakes were getting hotter and hotter. So I let off the brake a little bit. I pumped it a little bit. I got into it a little bit more. And, and because of that experience of when I wrecked, I didn't wreck at Pomona. And, and the reason why is because I knew what not to do versus let's say that incident didn't happen where I locked up the brakes and crashed. I probably would have crashed at Pomona because I would have been too heavy on the brakes in a nervous panic that I'm not going to be able to stop the car. And, and really, at the end of the day, seat time is so important to any driver because it teaches every run down the track matters Every run down the track is a, is a tool to learn something different about what you've done, uh, what the car is going to do in certain situations. And, and when you become one with the car and you can almost predict everything that's going to happen or when something happens, you can identify why it happened. That's, that's when, you're, when you've reached the point of being a really good driver, in my opinion. <laughs> Well, that's why they say we learn from our mistakes, right? Uh, absolutely, absolutely. Now you were talking about earlier how you, you know, get put the fire suit on the same way and all that stuff. Uh, that answered that, that answered one of my upcoming questions, which was, uh, do you have any previous rituals or superstitions at all? <laughs> uh, yes, Abs- absolutely, I do. Yes, yep. I put I put my left glove on before my right glove. It's so yeah, that, that's pretty superstitious. Absolutely. Now, what what do you enjoy most about being a drag racer, Paul? Wind wipes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the, I gotta tell you, the wind light is the greatest feeling in the world. The wind light is when you're six years old and you wake up on Christmas morning and you see all the presents under the tree. <laughs> that, as an adult, that's what the wind light is to me. And it doesn't matter what round it is. A wind light is a, it's, a, it's almost like the first round wind light is a relief of pressure. And it's, it's like the first round is the final every time. It's unbelievable. But yeah, wind, wind lights for sure. But, but really at the end of the day, and, and, and I say that a lot, I apologize, but wind lights, but what really makes it special is when the crew and, and say my family, my kids, my mom, my girlfriend, my crew chief, Ryan Pretty, when the crew comes and picks you up at the top end after I rolled up the chutes and everybody's celebrating together. That is, you know, is one of the greatest feelings ever. The first feeling is for me going through the finish line, seeing my wind light. The next is when everybody that's coming to pick you up expresses their joy and, and, and their happiness for what just occurred. Everybody works so hard. To, to get the car to the track, the maintenance on the car, to go from A to B, and everything and all the hard work that's involved. And, uh, and having everybody celebrate together for, for a, a great thing uh, makes it all worth it. And it's, it's, a, it's an unbelievable feeling as a driver. Now, if I ask you what do you hate about drag, drag racing, what are you going to tell me, losing and the money? <laughs> I'm not going to tell you the money because the money, it's, it's a money pit anyway. You're never going to make money at drag racing, you know. Um, but the, the biggest, the, the what do I hate about drag racing is the disappointment in myself when I make when I when the reason I lost is because of me. And what I mean by that is, let's say we dial the car six sixty five, right? And and the car goes six sixty seven. Okay. It, it didn't run the number. Who knows why? It, 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 it lost uh, 7,060 foot, and that's why I, I was too slow at the big end. You know, and that, that's okay. The, the first thing that I look at, and probably a lot of drivers do too, I look at the reaction time. 
if if I if if my car runs dead on and I and we lose the race because of my reaction time, that is the biggest disappointment for me. And that happened a couple times last year where my my driving at the end of the year was a little bit erratic and, and interestingly enough, the way you hold the trans brake button, how much pressure, not enough pressure, well I'm not gonna say not enough pressure, how much pressure you have on there. Uh, has everything to do with the reaction time, in my opinion. If you're if you're pushing that button so hard and you're murdering it through the steering wheel, uh, that's not how I drive. So if if I find myself doing that and I'm aware of it, I'll back off a little bit. But uh, for sure, it's it's the, uh, the disappointment in in the loss at at the hands of myself. All right, now, Paul, if you could have the Drag Race fans remember one thing about you, Paul, what would you want that one thing that they remember to be? Uh, re- really, uh, I'm a really happy person, and and the fact that somebody looks up to me um, and because I'm in a race car and they're not makes, makes me really, really happy. Um, I don't even know if I answered the question. That's a dumb answer. <laughs> well, well, <laughs> sorry. What, what what would I want? What would I want them to remember me as a racer? Um, I I don't know. That's a tough question. I mean, I would say that I that I drove a really fast, good looking car, and 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 they enjoyed seeing me go down the track. I don't know. I don't know how to answer that question. I, I had a, I have to put some thought behind that. I apologize for that. No, that's all right. So, how was your first time? Oh, you know what? Here, here, here. I just came to Okay. Me. Have fun doing whatever you do in life and do it to your fullest of potential. Give it your all. Whatever you do in life, give it your all, no matter what it is. Be passionate about everything you do and give it your all. So, you want fans to remember that you always give it your all out there on the track? And then I'm very passionate, for sure. All right, so let's go back to your uh, first time ever going down a drag strip. How was that experience for you? Was it nerve-wracking? Very, very scary. <laughs> very scary, very nerve-wracking, and I wanted it to be over now. I <laughs> wanted the finish line to come now. <laughs> yeah, yeah it, like it was an eternity, right? So I'm going down the track. In a nine-second car doing 144 miles an hour, and it's an eternity. And and uh, and it's funny now going 660 at at 209 feels like an eternity. Isn't that something? Yeah. You would think it would be the exact opposite. <laughs> it's not. It it it, it it it's it's an eternity for me. You know, especially when I'm chasing somebody, because <laughs> I forever in a day I was always being chased, and then I would find myself, even though I can't move, leaning forward the closer I'm going, come on, <laughs> <laughs> hoping that the guy doesn't cross before I do. But but now that I'm the that I'm chasing people, it's um, yeah, it, it, and then that that's to prove the point that no matter how fast you go down the track. As you become acclimated to the speed, everything slows down. I mean, I can, I, I don't do this, and I don't recommend doing this, but I can look up at the scoreboard. I can look at the crowd. I can do a lot of different things because everything has slowed down for me, and that has a lot to do with comfort level, seat time, and experience. You know, and, and these are the guys that. The guys that have a, a plethora of experience and know, you know, Justin Lamb, I, I'm sure it seems like no matter what car he's driving, it seems like 30 seconds to get to the finish line because there's so much going on. He's driving the finish line. He's doing all this other stuff. Uh, but, but yeah, it, 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 it's interesting to me how even though I'm going way faster, it still takes an eternity. But that's a testament to the comfort level. All right, now, what drag racers inspire you? What drag racers inspire me? Um, well, some of the guys in my category, okay, that inspire me are, are uh, past champions. 
okay, in, in, in the category. Uh, guys like Sandy Wilkins, Mike Williams, Ronnie Proctor, uh, one of the one of the guys that I race with on the circuit, um, Joe Rubicek, uh, who I oftentimes in the past used to take me in his trailer and we would pit our cars together. I ended up getting the same exact engine that Joe has in his car, and we're very competitive with one another to see who had the better ET, who had the better reaction time, and uh, his car always beats mine and. Probably because his car weighs 150 pounds less than mine does, but uh, even though we make the same power, but uh, it's uh, people like like Joe that, that have experience and have won, uh, you know, multiple times. Uh, they inspire me, and and I learn a lot from from the people around me. Another guy that that uh, that inspires me is uh, Doug Crumlich. Who, who finished number uh, three in the world two years ago, two in, two in the world. He, you know, he finished third, second, and then he didn't have such a good year this past year, but but he is a great racer. Uh, we, we've become very good friends. Um, yeah, so a lot of the guys that race in the, uh, in the category. Now, how about it? On a professional level, I, I would say Jed Coughlin. Jed Coughlin. Inspires me. Yeah. All right, now, who, who are all the crew members that keep that car going? Uh, my dad, Nick Mitzos, um, Ryan Pretty, and uh, and Kevin Holmart. Uh, those are the guys that travel with us to the races. Um, and then also uh, the guys that are in the in the shop, uh, my engine build, the, the guy who maintains the car at the shop as far as the motor and, and, and the tranny and everything, his name is Dave Beckley. Uh, he works at, at our shop in uh, Southern California, Mountain View Performance. So, uh, yeah, small crew, but but very, very, very important. Now, who are your sponsors? The sponsors are uh, Napa Auto Parts, uh, Haviland, Motor Oil, and, um, of course, Mountain View Tire. Mountain View Tire being the, the, the primary sponsor on the car. All right, now, is there a lot of preparation that goes into getting that car ready for a weekend? Um, not not too much. I, I would say the first thing that we do is, is make sure that the valve springs are good. It's, uh, you know, we, we have fresh oil in the car at pretty much every event. And uh, tire, the tires, we get about 100 runs on them. Uh, the motor, which we're actually refreshing right now in the off-season, the motor will get about 80 runs on it. Um, so really, in, in before we hit the track, it's going to be uh, new motor oil and, and uh, making sure that the, all the valve springs are good and, and fresh spark plugs, of course. But uh, other than that, it's just the basic stuff. You know, batteries charged, parachutes packed. Obviously, we have fuel in the car. Um, so, yeah, not, not too much maintenance. Uh in, in between events, it's it's more in between the rounds, you know, that, that we're doing stuff. Now, will you guys be doing a lot of uh, maintenance on the car in off-season? Yeah, well, we, we, like I said, we're refreshing the motor right now. I had about 80 runs on it, um, so it was definitely time for that. Uh, that it's, it's all in pieces, getting ready to, uh, to put it back together. We're gonna uh, we're sending out the transmission to get uh, redone, and um, the rear end is good. It's it's all about the uh, the, the engine and the transmission. Uh, other than that, uh, everything is good on the car. The car works. It's deadly consistent. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. So we're not we're not gonna be changing the other things. We're not gonna be looking to go faster. Although it might go faster because the engine's gonna be refreshing. Um, and, and new tires, basically. Um, my, the, the tires I have on the car uh, serve their, their purpose, and then we'll have new tires on the car. But uh, basically just uh, motor and trans is uh, what the major things in, in the off year. All right. Now, Paul, do you have any uh, favorite tracks to race on? I do. I do. I, uh, I love racing at Vegas, and I love racing at Sonoma. Um, really, really, really do. I want to win Vegas and I want to win Sonoma. Um, 
I want to win at every national event track on, in Division Seven. I've done Pomona and I've done Arizona, uh, but but I, I really do love racing in uh, Sonoma, and I do love racing in Vegas. And 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 part of the reason is uh, I, I just love the facilities. They're great facilities. We have a lot of fun in the uh, you know the nightlife, uh, going out to dinner and restaurants and stuff like that. Those are those are fun cities to be in. Um, and, and really for me, it's, I love the tracks too, because, uh, I love the grandstands, the way they're set up. And I also love the, uh, the long shutdowns, the long shutdowns. It's, it's not going to be a problem stopping it at either track, whether you have parachutes, you don't have parachutes. It, it's, it's a non-issue. So that has a lot to do with it too, is, uh, you know, feeling, uh, Knowing that I don't have to worry about that. Not that I'm a worrier, but it, it's it's nice to know that you got plenty of time to stop. Now, do you only do quarter mile racing? I do. I do. I have done eight mile before, but that's usually because of uh, uh, weather uh, reasons. For instance, in Fontana, it'll it'll often get very very windy. And they'll narrow the race down. They'll shorten it to eight mile because of the issue of the wind and, and the faster speeds and, you know, uh, and issues occurring at the top end. But uh, I've never uh, had the luxury of going to like a Midwest uh, eight mile race. Uh, but that would, that would be fun. I would love to do that. So, but quarter, quarter mile is your preference? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I know some guys like some guys like the eighth mile because it says saves on the parts and you know, wear and tear on the car. Yeah, no, there's there's definitely truth to that. Definitely truth to that. Now, how how many? But if you think about it, if you're doing eighth mile, you're in the car less time. I want to be in the car more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, want, I want to do three quarter mile racing. <laughs> well, yeah. Now, where do you get all your fire safety equipment from? Uh, Simpson. I, 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 I'm a Simpson guy. So everything is uh, Simpson. Yeah. All right, so Definitely, now... I've uh, been wearing the products for uh, probably uh, 10 years now, and, uh, and I like it. Cool. So now, Pa, what, what would you consider to be uh, the milestones of your drag racing career so far? Well, w winning winning my first event was was uh, was definitely a milestone. Uh, that was in 2018. I had runnered up at three prior races, uh, but never got to uh, seal the deal. So in in uh, at the Winter Nationals in 2018, I was finally able to uh, accomplish that. Then here again in 2020, in, in uh, at the Arizona Nationals, I was able to win that. Uh, my next milestone, one, one of the goals that I had this year was I really wanted to finish in the top 10. Um, I made some uh, some bonehead mistakes at the end of the year that were entirely my fault, which uh, prevented me from, you know, going further in rounds, which would have sealed the deal for me It's in terms of the top 10. But uh, that would definitely be my next milestone, top, top 10 finish. After that, well, I mean, I, I want to win more races. But, but the next milestone I want is I want to finish in the top 10. And basically, you have to win races in order to finish in the top 10 for the most part. All right. So now, what would you consider to be your biggest win so far? Uh, it, it was, you know what? It, it, was, it was definitely the first one, Pomona. But that, that would be the biggest win. But I'm going to say that the Arizona win... Uh, trumps that one because of uh, 2019 was not a good year for me in terms of the results on the scoreboard and, and, and how I finished to years in comparison. So I almost felt like, shit, am I going to get to win again? Am I ever going to be able to do it? So it was just myself and my crew chief at that event. None of my family members were there. My mom and dad were usually at every event. Nobody was there. It was just myself and Ryan Pretty. And, the, and 
the fact that, that we did it together and, um, and, and my driving that weekend, I couldn't hit the tree to save my life. I want to say through the first four rounds, my best light was like a 40. And, and that was the best one. The worst one, I want to say, was like a, a 75. But all in between. You usually don't go rounds when you're cutting lights like that. I was fortunate that whoever I was going down the track against was worse. And then the final round, I was going up against Ed Open. And I've raced Ed Open before. Funny thing is, I, I want to say it was 2014. Ed Open and I went uh, head-to-head in the final. That, that race went in 2014. It was a double breakout. Ed, Ed broke out less, so he won the race. Um, so it was, a, in a sense, it was a rematch of that race. I had never raced Ed at another race. Oh, maybe I did. I had never beaten Ed before. So now I'm going into the final round against Ed Open, who I have not beaten before. I want to say we've raced either two or three other times, and he's beaten me every time. Ed Open is normally high teens, low 20s on the tree. And um, I, I'm going into this round like, wow, I have not cut a good light at all the whole weekend. There's no way I'm going to beat him if I'm cutting the lights that I've been cutting. So I went up there. I took my sweet time doing everything. I focused as hard as I could possibly focus. I went 003 on the tree to, I think, his 21, I think he went. And I caught him at like 1,100 feet. I lifted off the throttle, and I took the wind strike by, I think, 300s. Um, but it, that, for me, was, was better than Pomona because of the way the weekend went. Plus the fact I only had one qualifier to get in because we only had two qualifiers to begin with. The first one, I shook the tires really bad and had like an ET of 15 seconds. So the next run, we set up the car really, really soft. I put the, We put a brand new set of tires on the car, went down the track. I went like a 671, not even close to what the car's potential is. The next round, I, I don't remember exactly what, what we dialed. I want to say we dialed like a 63. I ran a 63. I was dead on. After not being down the track clean one time. So for us to overcome the obstacles of the car, the tires, the reaction times, and to have it all come together for that final round where everything was perfect. The car would have ran dead on if I didn't lift. I was 003. Everything was perfect. So it was the absolute perfect storm. So for us to overcome every each and every one of those obstacles, not that I have a lot of wins, I don't, but but that one definitely beats the uh, the Pomona one. Wow. So now, do you, outside of drag racing, do you have any other hobbies? Do you have time for any other hobbies at all? I do. I do. I'm real into uh, exercise and fitness. Um, I like to, it's really important to me to be in really good shape, to eat healthy, uh, uh, to look healthy and, and to really feel good about, uh, you know, about, about myself. Uh, so, so fitness, uh, exercise and fitness is really important. I also like to mix music. I used to DJ in high school and I still uh, mess around with that. I have a home built gym at my house. I don't belong to a gym. So the fact that all these gyms are closed up. I don't care. I have the perfect gym at my house, and I've turned it into a music studio. It's like a dance club slash gym, and uh, it's it's awesome. It's my little man cave. So, uh, <laughs> but I would say that's it. You know, other than that, it's uh, it's all about the family. I have four children, and uh, spending quality time with with my children, my girlfriend, um, and I like to cook. So, I have a few hobbies other than drag racing. I don't have all my eggs in one basket. <laughs> so what's your favorite genre of music? Uh hip hop. Hip hop for sure. Alright now do you do your uh kids and grandkids and girlfriend they all like drag racing? They do. Th- th- thankfully. It would be very painful if they didn't. <laughs> it's it's very <laughs> it's very important to have the support of all involved. Because if you didn't you couldn't be there uh, mentally and emotionally all the time. You just couldn't. 
it'd be impossible. If, 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 a, if a driver is with somebody that hates racing, it, it's not going to work. It's not going to work for that guy when he's in the car. It's just not. You know, it's, it's very important to have the support of, of all people around you. All right. Now, since you said you love the you love to cook, what's your favorite food to cook? Uh, Italian. Uh, Definitely Italian. So Italian is your favorite food to cook. Chicken. Yeah, chick, chicken parmesan. That's your favorite food to chicken cook parmesan. and and to eat. Yeah. Italian is your favorite dish to eat. Uh, yeah, and and uh, I really I think Mexican food is my favorite dish to eat. But I leave, but I leave that to my girlfriend. Um, she's really, really good cook as well. And I love to make soup. I love making soups. Problem is, it's not so cold in California every day. So yeah. every time it's cold, it's soup day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what's your what's your favorite beverage to drink? Iced tea. I don't drink alcohol, so I'm I'm, I'm big on uh, iced tea. Definitely iced tea. Every restaurant, it's iced tea. And P.F. Chang's, by the way, has the best iced tea out of any restaurant I go to. All right, so what's, they should be your sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. No, you know who should be my sponsor? Starbucks. Because I live at Starbucks. <laughs> That's funny. So what's, what's your favorite movie of all time? Believe it or not, this is going to sound weird. The movie Ghost. I love the movie Ghost. Oh, yeah, that's a good movie. Yeah. yeah that, that one is uh, is special. Yep. Unch- How about you? What's your favorite movie? Uh, I like A Few Good Men. Okay. That was a good movie. Robert De Niro. Yeah. Oh, they have so many yeah. so many famous people in that movie. There's too, too many names in that yeah. movie. I love I love Goodfellas too. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a good one too. Yeah. Now, what, what was your favorite cartoon growing up as a kid? Um, favorite cartoon. There's a couple of them because it's different eras. Like as a real little kid, I would say Tom and Jerry. Um, as a little bit older, uh, Scooby Doo. All right. Now, what's been your most embarrassing moment out on the track? Crashing. I don't know if you consider yeah. that embarrassing or not. <laughs> well, it, it, it is, but but you ready for this? Go ahead. I'm gonna I'm gonna give I'm gonna give you one. The last my most my most embarrassing moment, and this is a good one, happened the last time I was down the track this year. You ready? Yeah. So I'm in the staging lane, first round, and um getting ready everything's it's kind of a rush 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 i get up there you know we do our burnouts i back up and you know let, let's fast forward stage the car uh the other car leaves i leave i know i had a good light i launch as soon as i launch i didn't even get to the 60 foot cone right and I go, I go one flat 60. I didn't even get to the 60 foot cone and my car nose dives like, like I'm on a throttle stop, super gas car. Right. I'm like, what the hell? And, and all of a sudden it took off again and then it nose dove again. It was like on and off the throttle, but it, but it wasn't me. I didn't do nothing. Wow. So then final, so I pedaled it, nothing happened. I just shut it down. I went down the track. I think I went 14. You know, I lost. I, I, it's funny. My opponent dialed 745 and went 746. I thought that I was praying they were going to break out, but they didn't. Anyway, so as I'm, as I'm coasting down the track, I ba- actually, I couldn't even get off the track. They had to come push me with the, with the, um, you know, with the, um, the, tr- the quad. Anyway, they get me off the track, and I'm going through my head. What the hell happened? And my crew chief gets on the radio. Did you blow the motor? And I go, no. And and as soon as they push me off the track and I come to a stop, I said, oh my goodness, you ready for this one? Go ahead. I forgot to put, I forgot to put gas in the car. <laughs> I ran out of gas. So it's not that it was an embarrassing moment 
like to nobody knew. But when my crew chief came and picked me up, he goes, damn, I hope you didn't blow the motor. I go, Ryan, I ran. I